waiting for you to do. And so I want to take this opportunity to thank God um, for life and to thank God for this opportunity to bring his word through. I also want to thank God for our bishop and our mom. May the Lord bless you so, so much. For trusting us with this pulpit and this altar from time to time. I never take it for granted. But I bless God that we have parents who are willing to mentor us and to give us a chance to share that which the Lord is laying in our hearts. I also want to thank God for my husband and my children. One will be coming in the second service. One has gone for a mission today. He was speaking in a certain school in Yatondo. And I bless God. I look at him when he was leaving. I looked at him and I was praying for him. And I was so glad that he can be able to hold on to the God that we have been preaching through and through. And that now he can share the love of Jesus Christ with young people. If there is any inheritance that you can give to your child, it's not the many plots and the many cars. It's good if you have them. Please leave it for them. But the greatest inheritance is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today we want to look at the word of God. And uh, we want to look at the word of God in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13 to 14. You can give it any topic, but for me, I have called it, come to me. Come to me. The Bible says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Underline the word find. Because something you find is something you've looked for. Only a few find it. Then we will read Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30. If I could get it in the message translation, it will really be nice. If I'm able to get it in the message translation. This is what the Bible says. Are you tired? Worn out? Burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make, to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. These instances, the two instances that we've just read, Jesus was the one speaking. And he was speaking to believers. And you know, as I read the first scripture that we read in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, I was reminded of a song that I used to hear um, the, in, in the olden days when we were growing, I grew up in a slum area. And uh, there were these uh, religious people who used to line up on the roadside with long robes uh, marked with some red on the head or something. I can't remember exactly what religion it was. And they had drums. And they would sing as they jump along the roads and they'd go long, long distances. Apo Madare, they would go very, very far. Every Sunday, that was the site that we were used to. And there was a song that they used to sing. Now I remember, because we were children then. They used to sing a song that goes like this. Mzigo wadhambi utakwama mlangoni. I don't know how many remember that song. Mzigo wadhambi utakwama mlangoni. 
And as I was reading Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, I couldn't help but remember what I used to hear being sung in those days. Jesus is encouraging us to enter through the narrow gate. He is giving us two options in life. There is a narrow gate and there is a broad gate. There is a narrow gate and there is a wide gate. But he comes to us and he does not just allow us to take any route that we want. But he is telling us, enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. So he is telling you, I am providing, or rather there is provided two gates for you here. There is the narrow one and there is the broad one. But if you make a mistake of taking the broad gate, these are the consequences. You will find yourself headed for destruction. And then he goes on and say, many people opt for the wide and broad gate. In other words, many people are headed for destruction. Then he goes to the next portion and he says, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. There are few who bother to investigate the narrow gate. There are few who bother to search out the narrow gate. And these few who find it, they find life. They find life. He has offered the two options in life. And many times when I read about the narrow gate, what comes into my mind is a highway. Most of the times, people love it when we are on highways. Naturally, it feels smooth. Naturally, it is wide. There is even the jams that normally comes to those days when uh, before Thika Road was constructed, we had only um, a two-way, one going to town and another one that was coming towards Thika, and the jam used to be very bad. So the highway looks a suitable road for any normal human being to take. But Jesus is giving us a warning this morning that we should take the narrow gate. He provides an option. It's like you have entered an exam room and you have been given a question, a multiple choice question. There is A, narrow gate, and there is B, wide gate. But the examiner still comes back to you and tells you this is the answer. One answer is if you will. So he is like giving you a leakage. This is the answer. But many people do not even want to bother about the answer that the examiner has already given to you and to me. We choose the other one that we have not been given as an answer. Praise the name of Jesus. The wide road looks smoother and easier, faster and wiser. And the narrow road appears difficult and lonely and it has poor visibility. When you're walking through the narrow road, it looks like it has poor visibility. It looks like it is lonely because in most cases, you'll only find like one person passing at a time. So it looks very lonely. And many times we want to appear in the places where people are. But Jesus is saying, when you appear in this road where there are so many people, then this is the road that leads to destruction. It has hit me in the recent past. In the recent past, and I believe it has hit you too. That your life for tomorrow is not very assured. One as if you. It is not very assured. Is it just because of the pandemic? Maybe, maybe not. But when you are alive today, this is the day that you can make a wise decision. Because you are not assured about tomorrow. Today you are with somebody. After a day or two, when you try calling them, you are being told they went yesterday. And it has been the trend. There was a time when some members in our church used to think it's only in DCIK. It's not in DCIK. It's a global thing. And so you don't know about the future. You don't know about tomorrow that you are planning for. And so the best time to choose 
The route to follow is today. It is today. And I know as we are seated here, most of us are born again. And so you're asking yourself, why must you tell us to take the narrow gate? As I read through the scriptures in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 and 23, that is just below the place where Jesus is giving us an option of taking the narrow gate. Then he comes and he is speaking and he says, many will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons. And in your name, perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. And you know what I perceived when I was reading that scripture? Jesus was not addressing the non-believers. He was addressing the believers. He was addressing a people who were following him. In the midst of the crowd that he was addressing were disciples whom he had worked with for close to three and a half years. He was addressing a people who had seen, seen him perform miracles. And he is telling them there is a time that is coming when there are people who are coming to tell me that they performed miracles in my name. They drove out demons in my name. But I will tell them, get away from me, evildoers. And that struck me. I started asking myself, what does this mean? Is it possible then that I can think I am on the narrow road by virtue of the things I'm doing in the house of God, by virtue of the things that I'm doing in the presence of God, but when God looks at me, he doesn't know me? Is it possible? What are some of the things that would make it be like that? What are some of those things? As he is talking and he is saying, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I'll show you how to rest. Who was he talking to? He was talking to believers. Meaning, we can be believers, but we are still heavy laden. We can be walking this walk that we call the walk of faith, but we are still carrying baggages along with us. And Jesus is saying, because it's very, very difficult to walk the narrow path when you are carrying on you baggages. He is saying, come unto me and I will give you rest. What are some of the baggages that we find ourselves carrying? I could be born again. You could be born again. Because there's a day when you repeated the sinner's prayer. Someone prayed for you. And after they prayed for you, they, they told you, Bana Asifiwe, and you said, Amen. And they asked you, where is Jesus now? And you said he was in your heart. I don't have a quarrel with that. You could have done all that. But the question is, after that, how have we been living our lives? We could still be having baggages of unforgiveness. Jesus is saying, come unto me. We could still be having baggages of hatred. Jesus is saying, come unto me. And I'll give you rest. He realizes that we do not know how to rest on our own. And no wonder he says, come, if you can get, just get uh, Matthew chapter 11, the scripture that we just read. Still in the message translation, he is saying, come unto me. He is asking, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out on religion? In other words, you have been practicing this work of faith. You have gotten to a place. You are tired. You are worn out. You are burnt out on this religion. He says, come unto me. And not only come unto me, but he says, get away with me. In other words, get a retreat with me. Let us go out together. I want to take you out today. 
But as I take you out, I want you to let your baggages fall so that we can go and just have a nice time together. Praise the name of the Lord. Because in the narrow path that leads to life, there are things that we cannot go in with. The wide gate, there are many, many things that we can carry along. Because it's smooth, it's wide. You can pass with whatever it is that you want to pass. In any case, it is leading to destruction. But at the, at the narrow gate, as we continue moving in this journey, we get to a place that is called the cross. And at the cross, that is where now our baggages are supposed to be left. We sing a song, we normally sing a song, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. So what does this mean? It means when we get to the cross, then we are supposed to let go of unforgiveness. And by the way, I looked for the word unforgiveness in the dictionary. It does not exist. What has it feel? It is non-existent. Why? Because God does not expect us to carry unforgiveness. It is so heavy for any human being to carry it. At the cross, that is where we let go of unforgiveness. At the cross, we let go of maliciousness. At the cross, we let go of manipulation. At the cross, we let go of all those baggages that have been causing us to be tired, to be worn out, until God cannot do his work in our lives. I don't know whether you can just sit down and think of the day that you got born again, the joy that was welling from deep inside of you. You wanted everybody to know that you were born again. You went around singing about this Jesus who had saved you. Prayer was not a big deal. Fellowship was not a big deal. When you heard that there was a fellowship at so and so's house, you wanted to be there. Why? Because there were no baggages that you were carrying along with you. But you know what? As we live in this world, we keep on rubbing onto each other. And there are heartaches that come. But all oh, that God would help you and I, that when the heartache comes, by the time we get into the evening, we will have gone to the foot of the cross and laid it there so that we can proceed with our walk on the narrow road. It is sad that some of us get to the cross because the cross is a time-to-time -time thing. We get to the cross and Jesus is saying, come unto me, come and lay all these burdens down. And then we lay it down and we look, step back, we look at it and we are thinking, you think I can forgive my sister Sarah? No. You want me to forgive my husband? No. So what do we do? We bend down again and we carry the same, same weight of unforgiveness and we walk back with it. So that we, oh, the only thing that is left with you is born as if you were. But your baggages are still at your back. One has a few. You come and you place down. Maybe you are working in the government somewhere. And the office that you worked in before you got born again, uh, there was a lot of corruption. And you used to receive a lot of money. And so life looked very easy for you. But now you have come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you're being told, this is not a life to live. And so you stop it for a little bit. But as life goes on, you feel, I cannot do without that which I used to receive in that office. So slowly you get back into it. Slowly you go back to the foot of the cross. And that baggage of corruption that had been left there, you carry it along with you and you start moving. And we still see you coming to church. You still see me coming to church. But I picked up the baggage that I should have left at the foot of the cross. Jesus says, come unto me. 
and I'll give you rest. Get away with me and I'll give you rest. Oh, how I pray that we will desire to get away with Jesus on a day-to-day basis. That it won't be just a one-time event. It won't be just a one-time event. For some of us, and I believe we are all Kenyans, we normally come to the foot of the cross after the elections. When we know who has been elected the president of Kenya, we come to the foot of the cross and we lay the hatred, the tribalism, the prejudice, we lay it at the foot of the cross and we start hugging each other and we are loving one another. But as soon as it's one year to election, like now, next year is election, we go back and we start removing it, you know? And then we pick it, we dust it up, and we carry it along with us. And suddenly, I start realizing that I am a Luo. And when I look at you, I don't see a sister or a brother. I am seeing a Kikuyu. Why? Because I picked the tribalism, and I carried it with me. I don't know whether you've ever asked yourself, what if Jesus returned? A week to the elections in Kenya. What if you had the trumpet a week to that election? Would you make it to the kingdom of God? Jesus says, come unto me and I'll give you rest. He knows we do not know how to love each other from different communities. He knows I don't know how to love you from a different community. But he says, come. Get away with me. I'll show you how to do it. In other words, you just surrender to him and he will show you how to rest. To take a real rest. When I saw Sophia, Remember the Bible says that many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, we performed miracles in your name. Lord, Lord, we chased demons in your name. Lord, Lord, we preached and people got born again in your name. But Jesus will say, away from me, I do not know you. You know what? I'd rather not perform all those things. But I get an assurance that Jesus knows me. I get an assurance that when the trumpet shall sound, he will tell me, well done, my daughter. That's all I want. All these other things, like I normally hear the young people call them, They are domains. If God gives me power to do whatever he wants me to do, fine. But the bottom line is, what is my relationship with him? What is my relationship with him? I happened to have watched a skit a few days ago. (laughs) And there was this guy, a governor. A governor who had acquired a lot of wealth. And so as they were walking... People, his guys, his aides could not allow him to walk. Not because there were no vehicles, but because they wanted to make him feel good. And the sight that I saw reminded me of a, a was it a woman? Wangwa Makeri was a woman. <laughs> I've never known what, it, what she was, you know. But the, the story always amazes me. So, this man wanted to be like Wangwa Makeri. And so what he did, he sat on this seat. And the seat had very long arms, you know. And so his aides were busy lifting the seat high on their shoulders as they walked with the man seated on it. And people were carrying carrying his, his, his luggage. And so he gets somewhere, it's a skit, remember. He gets somewhere and he realizes that there is a narrow path that he wants to take. He has a desire to follow Jesus Christ. And so as he gets into that narrow path, 
the master, Kumbi, he has a master. The master tells the aide, if he has decided to take that route, then drop him so that he can walk and he'll carry his baggages on his own. So he carries his baggages and gets to a place where these baggages are being weighed on a weighing scale and only a particular kilograms was allowed to pass. And so as it's being weighed, it is exceeding the weight that is allowed to pass to the next stage. Now this baggage has greed, has stolen money, has corruption, has a lot of things in big boxes. So he goes and weighs and it is exceeding the weight that is required. But he's being told, you leave it here and cross and go. But it's like, no, I cannot leave it here. All the money I have acquired, all the relationships I have acquired, all the wives I have acquired, I cannot leave it here. So he picks it, puts it aside and talks to one of the aides that he was left with and tells him, please call my friend and tell him to bring back those people who are carrying me. This way of the cross is too heavy for me. How many of us, you might not have reached that level of being carried like that man, but how many of us are finding it difficult to follow the way of the cross? How many of us are finding it hard to follow that way simply because the Bible is telling us for us to follow the narrow path, then you have to forgive that husband of yours who hurt you so deeply. You have to forgive that colleague at your workplace who hurt you so deeply. You must love that girl who talked negative about you. How many of us are finding it difficult? How many of us are finding it difficult? As we come to an end, we want to check out. What do we find in the wide road? Three things that we find in the wide road. Number one, the broad road is crowded. It's a crowded road. Jesus said, there are many who go by it. I think one of the greatest sins is conformity. There are many who go by it. So we want to conform. We are saying everyone else is doing it. So there's nothing wrong if I did it. Everyone else is taking corruption or taking bribes. What is wrong if I did it? Every other young person is doing it before marriage. Kwani ni mimi tu? Bwana asifiwe. So we want to conform. But remember the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 12. I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God to offer your bodies a living sacrifice. And it comes and says what? Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye renewed by the transformation of your minds. In the narrow path, you have to choose to walk alone. It's not about a crowd. So this broad road has a crowd. It is crowded. And it is crowded of people who are seeking to fit in. You want to fit in among your peers. You want to fit in among your friends. What will they say about me? They will think I am not up to date. They will think I'm, a, I'm, I'm not living according to the trends of the season. That is the broad path. The broad road also is not only crowded and wide, but it is deceptive. It is deceptive. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. 
There's a lot of deception in the broad path. A lot of deception. And if you're keen enough, between last year when the pandemic hit and we started having the lockdowns, the wearing of masks and all these things that is going on right now, the enemy also increased a lot of deception. And many people have decided to follow that path of deception. One has a theory. I was just sharing with a, a group yesterday that it has shocked me the great number of prophets who have emerged between last year and this year. Everybody is prophesying something. The Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. Until I got to a point, I told myself, I want the Lord to tell me. Because I'm also a child of God. Fathers talk to their children, don't they? Fathers talk to their children. And I know the Lord will talk to me when I read the word of God. He will speak to me through his word. And my brother, my sister, it's my prayer that you'll take it upon yourself to ask your heavenly father to speak to you before you can take a step to follow strange things and strange routes that are leading to destruction. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. The broad road is also a fatal road. It's the road that leads to destruction. It's the road that leads to death. And when I'm talking about death, I'm not talking about physical death. That one that normally causes us to mourn and then come bury and leave. No, 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 no. That one can happen to anyone. But I'm talking about spiritual death. It leads to eternal separation from God. One has a few. The road that is broad will lead us to eternal separation with God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 6, the way of the ungodly shall perish. The way of the ungodly shall perish. And no wonder Jesus knows that this road, if you take it, it will lead you to destruction. That's why he's coming and he is telling you and I, please take the narrow road. Take the narrow road. Path. And today as I stand here, my prayer is that we will take the narrow path. Because the broad path like we've had, it is crowded. Crowded by who? Crowded by heathens. Crowded by non-believers. But it's also crowded by people who say they are godly. People who have decided to be lured by the deception. They also follow the broad path road. As I conclude, I want us to read Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15 to 20. This is what the Bible says. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your hearts turn away and you're not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life. I won't turn to your neighbor and tell them, please choose life. Choose life so that you and your children may live. He is presenting it very well. That is Moses. 
He has reminded the, the, the Israelites of all that God did since they left Egypt. But now he's presenting before them life and death. He is presenting before them blessings and curses. Meaning if you choose life, you choose blessings. If you choose a death, you choose curses. Today, as I stand in this place, I want to encourage us. Choose life and come to the life giver. Choose life and come to the life giver. Choose life and come to the life giver. I know we are going through a hard time. Every one of us here, without exception, is going through a hard time time. But I want to tell you, choose life and come to Jesus. Because in Jesus, there is life. There are those of us who have felt disappointed. We have felt that this is becoming too much. We have sat back. Yes, we come to church because it's on a Sunday. But those other days, we are still consulting other mediums. My brother, my sister, choose life. Choose life. Come to Jesus. Born as if you will. Come to Jesus. And I know I'm talking to born again people, but I still insist. Choose life. Just like us to rise up as we pray. I don't know what it is, what baggage it is that you're having that may be stuck at the door, like the song I started with. I don't know which one it is. But today, the altar is here. The cross is free. Right where you are. In prayer, you can tell the Lord, I laid down. I laid down. I'm laying down my pain. I'm laying down my shame. I'm laying down unforgiveness. I'm laying down those practices that I've practiced in the secret places that I've been imagining are going to earn me some positions in my workplace are going to earn me some money are going to earn me whatever it is that you've been thinking they're going to earn you I want to tell you nothing can earn you anything apart from the Lord Jesus Christ come and lay down if you could just lift your voice and pray Oh God. We come to your altar this morning. And Lord, we want to lay down every manipulation. We want to lay down all unforgiveness. We want to lay down all corruption. We want to lay down all deception, Lord. We want to lay down all our doubts, our Father. Tonight we come to you, Jesus. This morning we just choose to come to you, Lord. Because your word tells us if we are tired, we are worn out. Lord, we need to come to you. We need to get away with you, Jesus. Lord, we want to get away with you. We lay down everything, God, this morning. That Jehovah God, you may come and have your way. You may come and cleanse us, oh God. You may come and hold our hands, our Father. You want to tell us in the book of Isaiah that we should come and reason together. Lord, this morning we have come to reason together with you. That King in glory, that which has been besetting us, O oh God. We want to lay it down and ask of your cleansing in our lives, O oh God. Father, we thank you. Help us to choose the narrow road. Help us to choose life. Help us to choose blessings. Us and our children, God, help us to choose blessings. We give you praise, Jesus. And we give you honor. Maybe you're there and you've never received the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. 
and this morning you feel like you can choose life you just lift your hand very fast and slip it down as we pray hallelujah 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 father we are so grateful this morning because of your goodness our father we have laid everything at the foot of the cross. And Lord, from today henceforth, we want to you to teach us how to live lives that are full of rest in you. Receive praises, O oh God. Receive glory in Jesus' name.